and welcome to episode 41 of Rushed Vibes. I am Jessica Rushed Vibes Rushing, accompanied by David Rushed Vibes Rushing, and Jay Belk, who is still playing in the background, Growing Pains. And we are here to rush the vibe with our tribe. Hope everyone's been doing well. I guess I'm just going to keep talking because David just keeps Tourette's dancing. I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure what he, he's doing now. I, I know where Salvi gets her dance moves from. Um, but yeah, we are here. Hopefully you lads and ladies are doing well out there. Episode 41. Episode 41. Live. Live and local. And local and in the building. Finally. It um took us a little bit of time to get uh to get going. We uh you know, we're um sorry, I'm getting my I'm getting my materials straight here. Um, we're not new parents. <clears throat> he has notes. We're not new parents, but we are new parents to having two kids in school at the same time. So uh, it's been an adjustment the last couple of weeks. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and for me, the biggest realization is that, you know, I, I don't think we'll ever go back to the way life was before, like the world, society, America. But one thing that is back, maybe not 100% back, but like 80% back, is rush hour traffic. Mm-hmm. And people drive like assholes. Yeah. it's um, Young assholes, old assholes, middle-aged assholes. I'm, I'm not discriminating against any age group, ethnicity of asshole. All of them. People just drive recklessly. And maybe it's because I have kids now. So I'm normally if I'm driving, if I'm not working, I have either a five-year-old or a one-and-a-half-year-old in the car with me. So I drive a little bit more conservatively, as most, I would hope most people would. But not everybody, because some of these assholes have kids in the backseat. It's ridiculous. I'm pushing 80, you know, because I'm trying to get the kid to, to, to daycare on time. And 80 is safe. And people pass me like, like I'm standing still. Now I know some people are going to be like, "Did you just say you drive conservatively and you just said you were pushing 80? <laughs> but listen, it's a controlled eighty. That's what's important. I'm not. The I'm speed not. Limit is technically seventy, so, so he's only yeah, going. 10 I, I, over. I never go more than ten over, but it's a controlled eighty. I'm not weaving. I'm not ducking. I'm not. I'm not. You know, uh, tailgating. Staying in your lane. I'm staying. I'm staying in one lane. Consistent eighty. And I'm going. And people just. No, people will make you feel like you're just an inconvenience and in their way. And it's, yeah. it doesn't make sense. No, it doesn't. We all have somewhere to go. But yeah, traffic is is miserable. Um, it makes you, it makes me miss April 2020 when nobody was on the road. Yeah. You could get from where we are in Northwest Charlotte to Ballantyne in 20 minutes because nobody was on the road. <laughs> For anybody who's not from Charlotte, Valentine is South Charlotte. We're in Northwest Charlotte. I just said that. Mountain Island area. It's a beautiful growing area. You don't need to give them all our details. We don't need stalkers. I mean, I'm uh, find this. Mountain Island's pretty big, actually. So it's deceptively big, actually. Okay. Now you just challenged a stalker to come. come and I mean, find if us. somebody want to come up in here, they can. They can try their luck with this. Uh, with this broken broomstick I have as our our first and last line of defense. Thank you. Um, that's why we need a dog. That's why we need weaponry. I don't need weaponry. Um, so yeah, you it, get the armor of the Lord. <laughs> so that we don't need a dog. The whole the whole armor. So then, so that I do miss that point of the pandemic where it's like you could, you didn't have anywhere to go, and when you did have to go somewhere, you could get there in no time because nobody there was there were it was just a ghost town, uh, and now everyone has somewhere to be and they're driving recklessly and or the uptake in older people or just people who aren't doing the speed limit at all that's frustrating 
and that can lead to accidents. I've been on the interstate where, you know, speed limit is 70 and I'm caught behind someone going 55 and it's hard to switch lanes because I've got a four cylinder and I don't know if it's some days. I need you to put in our vehicle business out there like that. Really? For all people know, we drive a, how many cylinders they got? 12 cylinder. <laughs> we couldn't afford I don't, no I don't 12 do, cylinder car. I don't do cars. So um, I, it's so funny when, like, when I go take my car in or I'll be in just like some random spot and, and dudes are talking cars and I happen to be in the vicinity of the conversation. So I'm just naturally like they expect me to be a part of it. I'm like, damn, because I don't know. I don't know. But I know how to drive it automatic. I can I can turn it on. I can change gears. I can accelerate. I can brake. I can, I can floor it. I can turn on my signals. I can turn on the windshield wipers. I know where the backup camera is on the dash. I can parallel park. But you start talking about stuff under the hood and in V eight splashes and 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 all that other stuff. I I'm, I'm gone. So I always I always try to just gracefully bow out of those conversations. Be like, yep, don't know about cars. So. Yeah, so I have I have a car dad, so I grew up yeah, yeah. hearing about cars yeah, and talking great. about cars. That's great. Good for anyway, you. so a lot of the interstates, or the interstate that I spend the most time on, is 70 miles an hour, and I usually get caught behind someone going 55 in that 70, and I want to switch lanes, but I'm just not always confident. So you're one of the people I was complaining about this morning, because you tailgate, you're tailgating someone. I'm not tailgating, I'm trying to switch lanes, but I'm also trying to not cut someone off who's already going 70, because, you know, some people get 0 to 60 in 3.5, I guess 0 to 60 definitely tailgating. in like, maybe 12 seconds, and 12 seconds is a long time when you're, you've got a car coming behind you, so yeah. Just go the speed limit. If you can't go the speed limit, take the city streets. That's yep. all I can ask. Jessica's drinking. A soda. She's drinking beer. It's a soda. It's a Virgil's. <laughs> and I purposefully just blur the camera just enough so that you can't quite make out the fact that it says, you can't see whether it, it says, says soda or whether it says beer. It says vanilla cream soda. <laughs> but I will tell you, she had to get the bottle opener. To I open used this. my I used my hand. <laughs> I twisted it. And it's like, I was craving a soda, but and you know what's crazy is I as I told her earlier uh, last week, sort of last week, I was like, man, I'm craving a beer, or I'm craving alcohol, or something like that. And she went to the store today, and she got herself fake beer, but she didn't get me real beer. It's crazy. One, it's not beer; it's a soda. It's I in a beer said, bottle. No, it's in a glass bottle. Yeah, it's a beer bottle. I was craving a soda. I personally try to avoid sodas that have high fructose corn syrup in it. And hydrogenated oils. And hydrogenated. <laughs> I mean, it's not typically in sodas, but I try to avoid I just remember always oil. being yelled at. Fry fructose corn syrup and hydrogenated oils. Stay away. No yeah. honey buns. No honey buns. Man, I used to love my honey buns. Try to limit, try to limit fast food. I love my honey buns. I still love my honey buns. Especially McDonald's. But I'll let the girls have their exception. That's only because our... My parents continuously. <laughs> Sal, was, Sal was actually like came for me. She was, she was like, Ma, she. I think she wanted us to go somewhere to get food, and I was like, well, the only place out I eat is Chick Fil A. Not that Chick Fil A is any better. Um, it's still fast food, but I mean, I've are, read their ingredients list, and it's like they've mild, got Jesus on their side. They do, and it's like mildly better than McDonald's. Um, and she was like, so you don't like McDonald's? And I was like, no. And I, and I said that's why I don't buy you guys McDonald's. And she's like, oh well, Grandma and Popa. Fry has McDonald's all the time. And I say, yeah, that's your McDonald's quite, exception. Quite literally all um, the time. Because left with me, they'd be one of them kids who have just never had McDonald's in their life. And, and that's how. Then this is how I know my wife truly loves my parents. Because I remember when Solace was young, our oldest, she was young. She was like maybe two or three. We were out somewhere. And I, I like to play around with the kids when I have like adult drinks or like coffee or soda or something. Maybe sometimes liquor, <laughs> but I never intend. I'm never intentionally going to give it to them. I just want to see if they would take it, especially whiskey because you know it's very strong. Um, so I had a soda, and I was I was lifting it up to Silas's mouth, and of course she was like, and just like blanked on me. She was like, "Don't give her soda. I don't want her to have any soda." I was like, "Number one, it's my kid too, but I, half half my kid." But I do health research. And yeah, your your research. your health research, your your blog research. Um, 
one, my kid as well, right? So if we're to say the kid isn't to have soda, that's a discussion. It's not an ultimatum. It's not a mandate. So why she run around here like, like she like she run she the, runs place. the place because she does. These are, these are lies. And these are know, falsehoods. You know what? Um, but the, the, what I was saying is, I know I know she loves my parents because like she blanked on me, but she's just like accepted the fact that my parents are going to get the girls happy meals, and so that's like her one concession mm-hmm. on uh, on healthy food. So, <clears throat> oh, I had something I was going to bring up. I can't remember what it was. Um, oh, September is going to be a busy month. So this will be our first episode of September. Um, we're recording this still August, but it'll be September by the time you guys see it. I think it'll be September 1st, actually. Mm-hmm. First, first of the month. Hang on, hang on, hang on. No? Okay. Cool. So uh, September is going to be a busy month for us. Um, we may have, other than the first episode, we may have all guests in September. So uh, if you've gotten tired of just looking at us and us only, fear not because we have people coming, other people coming for you to look at. Um, and really interesting individuals who have uh, really awesome stories uh, and you know, um, little little Big Brother Allen's going to make his Rush Vibes debut after being name dropped probably at this point, like at least 15 times. So 11 times. 11 times. But he's also a uh, he also teaches in uh, one of the high schools here uh, in, the, in the in the county. So interesting uh, perspective because he I think his first year teaching was was the year of the pandemic. So having to transition to that and then. Do remote. I thought he taught the year before that. Maybe. I don't know. I wasn't paying attention. So, uh, and then also, you know, trying to revert back to in school uh, teaching and learning. So, while with, I think, maybe a dash of, of online or hybrid. So, it'll be interesting. Get uh, get him to, to give his perspective, you know, teacher's perspective um, here in Rush Vibes. We've talked about it, but it'd be nice to hear from somebody who's actually in the trenches. So, he's one of one of a handful of people who we have coming on. So that would be fun. I'm really looking forward to it. And also, I had a thought tonight because it's almost, I think it is 11. It's 11 on the dot. I remember talking about last episode how I was feeling a little uh, defeated. Like, man, maybe we shouldn't keep doing the podcast. Like, maybe we should take a night off. And I was like, no. We march forward here at Rush Vibes. Yeah, I'm ready. For, <laughs> I'm ready for this break that we're going to take whenever this baby gets here. Because um, it's a lot. Because, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm managing now. Well, I've, I've been managing for a while, but um, I'm managing uh, at my, my day job, uh, multiple, multiple employees. So uh, I don't really like to use the term manage and employees. Um, I manage a team. Um, subordinates. In the, they're not subordinates. So uh, it's, it's been inter- supposed to be subordinates. It's been interesting because it just takes a lot because you have different personalities, different dynamics, and then different people who have different things going on, different concerns, different needs. Uh, and you have to be available and be uh, objective and fair uh, and empathetic. Sensitive. You have to be a, a lot of different things, uh, a lot of different versions of a lot of different things, if that if that makes sense. And, but then I also, when I'm done with that, I have to help manage a household. So it's like managing on top of managing. So I find myself... Uh, very ready to uh, unplug uh, come come evening time from everything <laughs> from, from work, from kids, from wife, podcast, everything. So this break, uh, the wall will be still be tired because we'll be welcoming new life. Uh, it'll be it'll be good and healthy, I think, from a creative standpoint. And then you know, when we come back for season two, you know, we'll do some new things, new set, new guests. Maybe new format, the video format. Maybe we shoot it differently. You know, I don't know. Need some sponsors. Let's do some advertising. You know, because we signed up for Facebook when we uh, when we created our our Facebook page last year, and Facebook was like, "Yo, we'll give you a free twenty uh, twenty dollar ad credit if you sign up." And I was like, "Nah," because I know I know how y'all do. And it was like, "Hurry up and use this offer. It'll expire soon." And they're still sending me the same notification <laughs> like a year later. Did you ever use it? No. And when they first offered to me, they were like, it's limited time only. I was like, yeah, I got a really big window of limited time only. So, 
But yeah, maybe we'll, we'll dabble into some advertising because I think we've uh, we've hit our ceiling of organic growth. Um, I want to see how much how much further we can we can push this thing, which I imagine is a lot more. Mm-hmm. So, what you got? Nothing. Nothing. I was just gonna let you keep going on this tangent that you've. That was found. A nice tangent. Um. I tell you what, let's take a break, and then we'll come back, and then we'll get into some, we'll get into some stuff. Cool. Cool. All right, we'll be right back. All right, we back, and we back, and we back, and we back. So, um. What you doing? Scrolling. Oh, you trying to find some stuff to talk about? All you said was so. Uh, no, I wasn't. I was online shopping. You're what? Online window shopping. Oh, Lord. So uh, before we get into the nitty gritty, your boy uh, dropped the album Sunday. <laughs> I no longer claim that man. Once he, <laughs> I told David this. Um, <clears throat> y'all can figure out who he is because right now I'm just, I just don't rock with him because the name of the album rhymes with Wanda. Okay. Um, right. Yeah. After he was, you, are you doubting my elementary? I was basing it off of school level ability to <laughs> to find two words that rhyme together. I was basing it off of the spelling. Sonda. <laughs> it rhymes with Sonda. Um there. yeah, I don't I don't rock with him. If you say Wanda, not Wanda. If I said Wanda, then no, I wouldn't it wouldn't rhyme. But Wanda. Donda. Sorry, go ahead. So now you said it. So all that effort to find a rhyming word, you still said it anyway. Uh yeah, I think there was a lot of great anticipation for this album. I I was done after <laughs> After I found out that your boy, not mine, um, was living in the Mercedes Benz arena. Um, what uh, what city is that? Is that stadium in? Atlanta. You know what Atlanta is also known for? Magic City. And men on the down. You know down. what Magic City is known and, for? And men on the down low. So. You know what Magic City is known for? Strippers and wings. You're not going. Lemon pepper Lou wings. Anyway. World uh, famous. So, yeah, I, I haven't rocked with him for years. Uh, the OG, that's who I I rock with. That's who I still claim connection to. I think going into, I feel like college dropout dropped my, I think I was still in high school when it dropped. Um, and then the follow-up album was college. So it's like I went into my freshman year with him and I just had such like, he was just great then. And it was like, I was in college. So it was really the first time I was able to develop my own listening. Like I didn't have to listen. This is a really long window way of you saying you don't rock with Kanye. I didn't have to listen to gospel. (laughs) You just say, just say you don't mess with Kanye. I didn't have to listen to gospel. Like we're getting, we're getting your whole like life story with Kanye. Can I just speak? (laughs) I just want to be able to speak. I'm sorry. Uh, I didn't have to listen to gospel or, or reggae. Um, I, I was able to like kind of forge my own musical appreciations. And of course it was influenced by like my, my peers, but I really loved, loved who he was. And then he was Kardashian and it's just like, there's no turning back. Um, and I feel for him. I'm sure this album is, is fire. Because for the most part, anything he puts out, with the exception of fashion, is is pretty good. But I'm ve- I'm I'm such a weird fan of people. Um, I'm very personality based, and even if I don't obviously don't know you personally, uh, a lot of my fan support of you comes from how I perceive your character or your stage persona, and. There are some personas I just, and it doesn't always make sense. Like I don't, I don't rock with Nikki. I'm not. I've never really been a big Nikki fan. But like Cardi, on the I other rock, hand, I rock with Nikki. 
okay cardi on the other <laughs> <laughs> cardi on the other hand like i i i appreciate her so it's 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 weird um but i feel yeah. like some people are more true to themselves yeah, Nikki, go back in their personas. I just couldn't. I couldn't get with the. I mean, I did it the other day. I couldn't get with the little the Barbie barbs. I just couldn't. I, yeah. So, <clears throat> but no, I'm not going to listen to the album. I play. I play a little bit of it down here before we started recording, it, and I saw Jessica very slightly. She was. That's she was, a lie. She was going. <laughs> it's she, a lie. As soon as I sat down, I knew what he was playing. I was like, I already know that this is it. Um, I. Th- I think I heard Hove on one of the tracks. Um, okay. Hove? Okay. You not Jay Z. You, you said Hove like y'all <laughs> like y'all tight. That's what that's what people who know Jay Z call him. Maybe I'm just channeling a future self. Um I did hear yeah, him. Yes, I, I heard Hove's voice <laughs> on the track and <laughs> <laughs> this is why I don't get like with it because someone always clowns me. Like whenever I try to to like Yo. What was it we said in our what was like one of our early podcasts? Um, we were talking about the podcast you used to listen, you were listening to that got you caught up speed on Tupac and Biggie and oh, the East Coast West Coast thing. And I, I was said like, it was dicey. I would, no, I was like, what set would you have claimed? You were like, I'm like East Coast, I'm ride or die. And I was <laughs> like, wait a minute, For, like just Look, calm, uh, calm down. down. That's calm, where I'm from. Calm down. Yeah. So. uh the album dropped highly anticipated Overly and uh, anticipated. 20 27 tracks who has time for that not in, i in total it's literally like track after track after track half of a sunday service at old baptist church half <laughs> at an hour and 46 minutes that's half of a baptist service um i uh was texting with my friend charles and told him it's really good, but but I can't get past the first six tracks because I keep repeating them <laughs> because they're so good. So I have no idea what the rest of the album is like because I'm I'm literally I go to like track six and then I'll I'll either repeat that or I'll go back to you know track two or track four. Like it's it's good. My friend Charles uh, has actually listened to it three times all the way through already. It's going to drop Sunday. <laughs> and today is How do y'all have this Monday. much time? I don't, I don't know. I well, Kanye don't. Well, Kanye is his favorite, his favorite artist. So Really? Yeah. I wouldn't have taken him as a Kanye guy. Well, that's why you don't put people in boxes. <laughs> I put everybody in a box. Yeah. You put your butt yeah. in a box. Ship you as well. Ride or die. Ship you somewhere. <laughs> um, Ride or die, boogie down. I might, I'll probably end up hearing it by default just because he's going to play it the next time I'm in the a- car with absolutely. him. Absolutely. Because that's what he does. Um, well, I, I put Savi to sleep with the, the Hove. I was the wondering Hove. what was playing. I was like, that's not Hamilton. The Hove track. Yeah, we, we got to switch it up a little bit. She went right to sleep, though. Hove, <laughs> put your child to sleep tonight. Thanks, Hove. Um, yeah. Oh, speaking of, what's this, What's the deal with the, with the diamond? Why are, we, why are we mad about the diamond? First of all, we're mad at Tiffany's. Cause this is a blood diamond. Like they, 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 you know. So we weren't mad in the hundred and however many odd years before it went I don't around know that Beyonce's neck. We net. really knew about it until Beyonce put it on. Cause you know Beyonce just gonna bring a different attention to stuff. But okay, so the diamond is over a hundred years old. It was acquired in in Africa somewhere. I don't know the exact. I, I saw you. I saw you. You couldn't you couldn't call it. So you just said Africa. That was good. I mean, it could have been Congo. Uh, I'm trying to think. Belgium, they were super abusive. Africa's pretty. It, it, it covers it, covers everything. It, yeah, well, Africa. it's a it's a blood diamond from Africa, um, which should probably be returned somewhere, but don't because they the country probably has a corrupt leader right now anyway. So he's going to give it to a wife or a mistress or somebody. So hang on to it till we coordinate our leadership. Anyway, we. We, we. Um, only four people. Oh, Uncle Phil say we. <laughs> only four people in its founding have worn the diamond. Beyonce being the first woman of color. I thought she was. I thought it was three. She's number four. I thought she was third. She's number four. Okay. You put your life on that. Yes. Okay. And she I is. Need to get, I need to get that. Just look it up. <laughs> no, I need you to get that little. Sorry. 
And she is the only woman of color to have worn this diamond. So people are already upset about that because they're just like, seriously, this diamond been around for a hundred and some odd years. Y'all didn't even have like someone model it just so that we can get a figurine, an idea of it. So like we're low key upset with Tiffany because Tiffany's is, is behind. They're behind the times. They're... Which we shouldn't be surprised. Um, they're probably trying to make a comeback utilizing Beyonce and Jay Z uh, as their, you know, their new spokespeople, figureheads. People are upset because they utilized. Um, I'm going to mispronounce his name. Basket, I believe, is the artist. Um, they used one of his art pieces. People were not too happy about it. Um, I really think it's just people finding reason to be upset about things that. There's just not enough to be upset about Beyonce. Like, if we're going to be upset with Beyonce, like, what about those chaps that she was wearing in her Ivy Park photo shoot, like, two weeks ago? Um, not that we all haven't seen her chaps before, so that's not even a reason yeah, to be upset. They're, they're Take nice. that smirk off your face. They're very nice chaps. <laughs> so Chaps are exquisite. I personally... <laughs> I'm about to leave. I personally don't care. Um, congrats to Beyonce. If anyone, I suppose, is worthy of wearing a diamond that is worth that much money, um, who has the caliber and the presence, I suppose it is Beyonce. Uh, Tiffany's is behind the time. So, hey, like, there's some other great women of color. Like, Michelle Obama should have been rocking that thing. Um, there are plenty of opportunities that are missed from great women who could have they could have taken advantage of and and utilized with that but i feel like those are the uh, i feel like it's not something that's worth people getting upset about but in this day and age people either have too much time or just seek things to be upset about and this just happens to be one of those things that people want to get upset about i mean she's rich he's rich they don't they got paid they're going to keep getting paid. They don't really care about your opinion. No one's going to cancel Beyonce. Like, try. <laughs> try and see what the hive does to you. Um, yeah. I would take my chances with Murder Hornet the before the I hive, took my the chances don't, hive don't play. with the beehive. So, I mean, it's again, I think it's just something that people are forcing to be upset about because there's really nothing right now to be upset about. Like, you know, it's... It's kind of um, poetic that I wore the shirt that I'm wearing because Thanos was right. Because y'all are tripping about rich people things that don't concern you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Tax brackets that you what, will never see. Well, I mean, you might see it, but you're not, you're not, if you, if you, not right now, if you're upset about it. I mean, I, I get that there's, there's a slight... Uh, um, I don't know what the word is. Irony, I guess, maybe. And Beyonce being the first African uh, or woman of color to wear uh, a highly uh, regarded blood diamond. <laughs> it's like uh, optics. But, you know, other than that, uh, it's it's just rich people doing rich people things. Mm -hmm. like and, and, that's, and getting paid for it. And being compensated for it. That's that's how I see it. Um it's like when people get upset about celebrities buying, you know, five figure handbags and talking about it on Twitter and talking about, oh, the privilege, there are people dying during the pandemic. And yes, there are people dying during the pandemic, but people should not get upset at rich people for doing rich people things because mm -hmm. rich, rich going to do what the rich do. Yeah. So the diamond from South Africa, South Africa, of course it is. Yeah, so I just noticed that was something that was on my Twitter feed and, and a couple of the podcasts that I listened to, uh, a couple of my regulars, um, they, had, they had mentioned it and touched on it. I mean, I, and I kind of got some context from them. I mean, you know, I fashion, luxury, it's all outside my ken, right? Like, I have no concept, understanding. Um, I'm completely ignorant when it comes to all that. She always has to, you know, give me the layman. But, you know, obviously it involved Jay-Z and Beyonce, so I wanted to, you know, it's part of the culture. Right. So I wanted to I wanted to, you know, dip my toe in it. But I was like, we mad because you're wearing a diamond. Like, Come on. And of course, you know, the white folks are upset. <laughs> but they're always upset. So that's um, why are they upset? Uh, well, I, I don't know if it's just it's unfair to say white folks, but I think people who who are used to Tiffany's being 
uh, a certain type of brand. Oh, they think we thuggeried the brand up. Uh, I think Beyonce is not necess- Beyonce and Beyonce and Jay Z don't necessarily fall in line with the tradition of people who have been, you know, representatives of of the brand. Like Which Audrey Hepburn, who played. I, look, essentially a whore in Breakfast at Tiffany's. Like she played an escort. Um, y'all uh, can try to deny it, but it's true. I mean, uh, she went home with people if I, she wanted. I don't know. I, I got no horse in the race, but I'm just saying. Marilyn Monroe it who was like, sleeping with married presidents. I mean, like. It seemed like people from multiple sides had 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 uh, had had gripes with it, but. It's I, I interesting to have this type of get moral opinion regarding how a brand should be regarded when the diamond itself and the brand's diamonds were are stolen property. But let's not let's not get into that. So when Killmonger comes up, starts giving people poisonous coffee, um, then y'all gonna learn. Uh, rest in peace to Chadwick Boseman. Um, what about Killmonger? He's still alive. <laughs> the person who portrayed him is still alive. Uh, but yeah, we lost Chadwick. Uh, was it a year ago? A year ago today? Or a couple of days ago? Man. Oh, it was. Yeah. Oh, I thought you just said that, and I was like, you can't just, you can't do that. You have to. You can't. Do that. No, it was like, yeah, it was like. A, I remember people okay, saying that's why people were posting pictures yeah, of him. It was okay. Like a year ago. So, rest in peace, our our black king. Um. So speaking of uh, this, that, not Chadwick, skipping over Chadwick, going back to what we were talking about. Speaking of stupidity, <laughs> uh, have you heard about people uh, taking uh, Iver, ivermectin? Is that the 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 the, the, the deworming parasite the, the deworming um, medication for uh, animals for animals like most notably horses? I didn't taking it as a cure for COVID as I feel opposed like I to. S- saw something about as it but i didn't to, actually believe it was real just as, like as opposed to taking the vaccine just like the crate challenge so people, <laughs> are, people are putting um <laughs> taking uh deworming medicine i mean i'm sure the deworming medicine has been around <laughs> longer than the vaccine so they, that's so, how they're justifying funny it. enough uh doctors are uh have, have are reporting people calling in with um cases of uh hallucinations <laughs> And uh, you know gastro uh, issues once they've taken the uh, ivermectin. So bless, bless all of your hearts. You know there are. Um, I want to say this delicately. It's not necessary. I'm gonna try to say this delicately. There are. Uh, this is a free country. Allegedly, depends on your definition of free. Carry on. This is a free country. Um, freedom of thought ish freedom of religion ish uh, freedom of expression for the most part as long as it doesn't endanger somebody else ish Uh, and as such and in this new media age where you know you have your mainstream media but then you have influencers and uh, talking heads on you know youtube and and blogs and, and things like that there are a lot of different places where people can get their news um, and there is a there is a significant distrust of mainstream media. And I think that that's loosely or maybe closely tied to people's distrust in government. Um, so they're more inclined to believe smaller scale people who seem more personable, right? More trustworthy because they don't have the stain, the, the aroma, the, the residue of mainstream media or government. Um, and some of these outlets have painted the the vaccine is is untrustworthy um un, untested unsafe and however people feel about that you know that is again freedom of this free country you feel how you want to feel about it. uh but i don't know about taking a <laughs> deworming <laughs> medicine uh, you know in in lieu of in lieu of vaccine i I'm just, that's just me. I if if I if I were skeptical of the vaccine, and I was like, I really don't want to get COVID, but I really don't want to trust this vaccine because I feel like it was rushed or I feel like it's whatever. I'm not sure that my better alternative would be deworming medicine used for 
horses and other large animals. I'm just, that's just me. So several inquiries. Where did this start? Like, where did this begin? Who, who was the first? I don't know. And, and, and I don't mean to, I, although it probably did start with like a, in like a, like a blog or influencer or whatever type person. I can't say for sure that it did. So I, 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 uh, unfairly, uh, implied that that's where it came from. I don't know, but I wouldn't be surprised to find out if, if that's true. But I just looked up one day and read headlines about people taking this medicine um, to treat COVID. So you were supposed to have COVID, test positive, and then go take this. I guess. This if you're if you if you're having warmer. if you're feeling symptomatic, you you take it and it allegedly uh, cures you or reduces the symptoms. I mean, I don't even take my chances with Pepto Bismol, so there's. There's no way I'd put this stuff in me. I'd rather just, you know, just throw me in the ocean. Um, I just, it's it's interesting how people and what things people choose to believe in and have faith in. Um, this is, I'm just going to do, I'm going to do what I, I, I that did. That is right what I did when your boy was president and I was just like, Lord, please, my prayer. I, I regularly said this prayer. I was just like, Lord, please don't let me, don't let me follow something so blindly and so foolishly that I, I can't, that I'm so distracted that I can't see. Shoot. I haven't had to say the prayer in so long. I don't even remember what it was, but essentially like, I don't want to ever be so, wrapped up into something or believe in something. And someone might be like, but you're praying to God, so that cancels it. But, like, I don't want to, I don't want to be so just ignorant of. You want to be a blind follower? Yeah, just ignorant of wisdom. Sheep? Well, I don't want to say sheep because I feel like. I feel like the sheep term, like people were using sheep towards a mask and it was just like, yo, we're in this situation. We just need to wear a mask. Like it's been allegedly proven that this is what's protecting us from. Well, the thing with masks is that it's, it's changed. Right. And I, and I think it's, we live in such a highly critical time where you can't, things can't, your knowledge of something isn't allowed to evolve without you being criticized, right? So this is, a, this is a new strain. This is a different strain of the virus um, that we were all exposed to. It was spreading at warp speed, no pun intended. And um, we were trying to figure, like scientists and professionals and, and top decision makers were trying to figure out the best way based on what limited data they had uh, was the best way to, you know, combat it. So at first it was don't wear a mask. Then it was wear a mask. Then it was wear two masks. And then it was okay it's safe to not wear masks if you've been vaccinated. Now let's put the mask back on. Like inject yourself with Lysol. <laughs> as this thing mutates and it alters and it evolves, so will our uh, information on the and our our um, uh, opinions on the best way to you know protect ourselves from it. So unfortunately, uh, when when you go from don't wear a mask to wear a mask then all of a sudden you know you lose all credibility and then it's just like once you know it's like a, it's like a wildfire so um i think that's that's why people reacted that way and, and called people masks because changing kind of flip-flop it seems like you're flip-flopping um and people are like mm, that's kind of, kind of fishy mm-hmm. so don't just follow the don't follow the man don't follow the government blindly so I, I, I can understand why people feel that way. I don't necessarily agree with it, but I can, I can see why. I think, I think what the pandemic has definitely taught is that one government needs a marketing department and they need to market themselves better because the perception that the average American, maybe below average American, American has of American government is very poor and between TV shows and movies and books and just things that the government has actually done. Um, and not just to black people, to like everybody. Just, you know, contaminated water that's still in Flint. Uh, just it's black people. <laughs> oh, sorry. Uh, things like the black people. Forcing people, like 
on reservations when this is their country, uh, this is their land. Uh, just, you know, having toxic waste coming from where buildings and manufacturing plants and not telling people and then these people are getting cancer protecting big big businesses that are you know poisoning people um and not giving them any repercussions for when people get sick the opioid crisis um bailing people out during recessions okay or, alex jones calm down sorry um goodness you haven't created a track record of being trusted so i just think there needs to be a marketing team in place for it, the government it's, so that people can, no, can it's, actually... It's fruit of the same poisonous tree. No matter if it's associated in any way, shape, or form government, they're always going to be a Then they should hire an large, agency. But it doesn't matter. It's still... <laughs> you still have the association with the government. It doesn't matter. I'm just saying that the government has some like you could get, you could get You could get Apple's marketing department to work with the government, and it wouldn't matter. People still wouldn't trust it. They just have some rebranding they need to do. This is not... <laughs> This is not a. This is not a like startup. America just it needs to a, come. And, uh, they need to just. This isn't a social media we app. We need. To, we look. I work in marketing. I would never work for marketing the government. But oh, excuse me. I will say that the government needs to rebrand itself. The country the needs to rebrand for, for itself. The, for the government. Like we just need to shut down. All of these big brands are taking like right, so we're gonna, off for mental health. Yeah, we're gonna. The government. The country just needs to shut down and so be gonna, like, I'm back and be gonna, brand new. We're gonna I'm move on. on. I'm just saying. Um, we're going to take an actual break. I'm going to take a break. I'm going to let Jessica get herself together because she's going. This isn't a bad idea. She's and going then off people the rails. will trust you. So we're going to take a break. Remember how bad and how we'll nobody come. trusted Domino's? Their pizza was like so bad. And then what did they do? It's still horrible. They rebranded themselves. It's still bad. It is still bad, but it's not as bad. All right. And we'll be. And you order it. We'll be right back. I order Papa John's, but we'll be back. All right. Oops. Back in this thing. Uh, Jessica's had a chance to calm down now, so we can... I could just jump right back into that market. We can, we, we can proceed as civilized, if it's, as a civilized people. Um, but speaking of stupid... <clears throat> this is the second time you've spoken stupid. Uh, I don't know if you all watching have been under a rock for the last couple of weeks, but uh, there's this new... Challenge. It's not new anymore. There's this relatively new challenge. It's not relatively new anymore. There's this is challenge. Uh, that you know kind of went viral, and it was called is called the milk crate challenge. So, for those of you who have been living under a rock and are seeing this, um, you basically take a bunch of milk crates and you stack them. Right. You make like a. Like a, I don't know, a pyramid would be a, a accurate description, but you kind of you go one by one, so you get you have a, a peak, and then you do the same thing coming down. Uh, and people are actually supposed to walk over. You can't use your hands, so you just have to use your your body weight to balance. Uh, the success rate is um, non-existent. Not not very high. <laughs> a lot of people, uh, at least a lot of the videos that made it online, were of people falling. Falling, ep falling epically, we had people like two people trying to go up at the same time, meet at the top and like pass each other and then go down. That didn't work. Um, people falling off like the second, <laughs> the second crate, which is like maybe two feet off the ground. The second um, crate? Yeah. Like, okay, now that's just sad. Yeah. People falling like their back straight on crate. Like it's. I'm pretty sure someone's died. Yeah, I, I think I heard heard a rumor somebody did die. I, I know that there was definitely a shootout at one during one, um, okay. somewhere. So I guess you know, gang business, you know, doesn't take a doesn't take the weekend off. But uh, yeah, I think uh, you know it. These were going, these were coming in in and out of the group chat like crazy, like at a rapid pace. At at one point, you know, we were sharing like multiple multiple crate challenge videos in, in the cousins group chat it was it was good content i enjoyed it i felt inspired really i wanted to i put out a, a, a facebook post about if anybody had any spare ones because i was trying to see something i actually i believe in my heart of hearts that i could successfully complete the milk crate challenge but uh seeing as i ain't got no milk crates 
we won't. Uh, I guess we'll never know. The world will never know. Like Kanye said, I guess we'll never know. So, uh, yeah, milk crate challenge mania. What, 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 what do you think? What's, what's your opinions on it? I don't rock with stupidity. Never have. <laughs> never will. Um, uh, and I feel like it's just fun. I, it's just good fun. I, it's not. It is. People are getting hurt. Nah, not seriously hurt. P- and people, the one, some of the people who are trying to do this, it's like <laughs> seriously, they're just, and I'm not trying uh, to discriminate, but it's like, you know, I know yeah. you can't do it. This one you, chick did it in heels, and she is stripper the only heels. person, like sh- like straight stripper heels. She's the only person that I appreciate doing the challenge. Everybody else, no, I don't. And even her, I'm like, sis, you could have fallen. Like you don't, you didn't know you were gonna make it. Yeah, Unless she did. you were practicing. No, she did. She knew she was going to make it. Just like I knew she was going to make it. No, but there's a chance. You're, you're not going to step on them joints and heels without knowing that you were going to so make it So she must have practiced at home. No, you can't pr- practice doing the milk crate challenge. Come on In now. her basement. Nah, she just got that. The confidence is over. Like No, no. Don't no. even say confidence because there were people who were confident they would make it <laughs> and they didn't get up. To the middle and they fell and then they had to do that like stupid i'm hurt but i can't look hurt but everyone knows i'm hurt Uh-oh. there was one guy who fell out there looking like dj Khaled's cousin and i know i know he messed up some vertebrae there's was, there was this and one the look on his face he was like i'm hurt but i can't Yo, look hurt there was this one um i can't remember i don't know who put in, in the guy they might have been my brother or it might have been uh lamont my cousin lamont Put one in, in, the, in the group chat, and I uh, started recording this dude after he had fell. Um, and it, and it, pro- it probably shouldn't be funny, but because he was hurt, but because because the challenge in and of itself is stupid, it's like, well, like I reserve the right to waive all sympathy and just laugh <laughs> at your stupidity. So I we were just like we we watched uh, watched the fight last night, and we just like watched it again, and it was. Just, it had me in stitches. Like my side, my sides were hurting. I had laughed that hard in a minute. Um, yeah, it's just. I'm glad I'm not in any group chats where we're circulating the crate challenge. Yeah, there's and like I, you know, I missed it, it for like a week. I would see crate pictures, but you know, how like Instagram when people share stuff, sometimes the video will play and sometimes it just shows a still. And I'm one of those like I don't watch videos with sound because I don't know what you people are posting and I have my kids around. Yeah. Um, and they're nosy, like they'll be quick to put their face in your phone. Like this, yeah. is, this is not for you. So I don't watch videos with sound. And then if it doesn't, it's sometimes it's so tedious to, to click a video with your thumb and hold it down long enough so that it opens the video as opposed to just going to the next either story or person's story. So it's a lot of effort for me. It's sounds, not. It sounds kind of. It's not, but it is. So I didn't like know. Champagne problems. I didn't know about the crate challenge till probably maybe a week in. I think you might have shown me something. Um, but then I was like, oh, all those clips that people keep posting. That's what this is. Because I hardly even scroll Instagram. But I was like, wh- who came up with this? And the David was like, you know, we're in a pandemic. People are bored. Nuh-uh. No. We had a gap where you didn't have to wear a mask. Y'all aren't that bored. Like, this is some 2020. I'm talking, you had from April to August of 2020 to do stupid things like this. I don't understand the crate challenge. And I won't even lie. There was a little, there was, a, there was, everyone has like that little stupid bug in them. And for a moment, I was like, maybe I could do it. And I was like, well, one, I'm seven <laughs> seven months pregnant but there was i was like i feel like i'm you pretty could do it i feel like i'm pretty balanced even if you were pregnant you could, you could do it pregnant. And i think i could probably do it better pregnant because my yeah. weight distribution is even yeah because you got the i got the front and the back so i'm the, balanced yeah. but my equilibrium is off but then i was like nah because if i did it people would be like dang pregnant girl she did it but if i fell they'd be like what kind of like i i would be Roll we not, through we the not, mud. We got nine one one on standby. People would be like, "Why would a pregnant person get on the crate challenge?" World star. But where are y'all getting these crates? Like, what? It's CIA. It's just a matter of time before we hear that there is a shortage of like milk delivery capabilities because yeah. y'all done bought all the crates. 
the CIA dropping <laughs> joints off in the hood. They're trying, they're trying to destroy us from the inside it out. It must be, it must be a minority challenge because I don't think I've seen white people do it. Uh, I think the guy who rolled the blunt while he was walking up the, while he was completing, I think he was white. No, there was a. He was black. I don't think he was black. He, there was, it was. A, then there's two people who've done it rolling a blunt. One of them was black. There were a bunch of people. There were a bunch of black people smoking black and miles is there of course <laughs> right <laughs> um smoking black and miles as they as they attempted to do it and but didn't drop the and didn't drop the, the black and miles when they Roland fell the blunt was black i don't think he was black he was black i heard he was not black but everybody's video quality like they're shooting on these android phones so when it actually gets uploaded to instagram it looks like i'm gonna go find it because i'm pretty sure um it's your, like 320 even mentioned mentioned it uh, and it was so funny because he didn't. Say that's how you know something's gone viral. If my father, yeah, although he, although you he, people he's people sleep on him, but he spends a lot of time on his on his tablet. And, and he on didn't Facebook. say rolling a blunt. He said something else, and I, I was I was like only only dad would refer to it as that. He said, oh, "What did he say? What did he say? Reefer? Did he say reefer? Mar- marijuana? No, he didn't say marijuana. He said something that only... Reefer? He's the only... It, I don't think it was reefer. It was. It either started with a G or... Loud? <laughs> <laughs> he was rolling out loud. No, it wasn't that. Oh, Yo, gonna, if my dad said loud, I would I would lose it. It, it wasn't I that. Would, I would lose it. Um, I would run out of his house. But anyway... And my father said loud. My father is 74 years old. The crate challenge just needs... I th- think it stopped... At this point, if you're still... Well, uh, TikTok pulled the uh, the hashtag from their algorithm. It's going to come up with a new one. So, uh, because they said it was dangerous. It's too late. The so, I think, I think somebody must must have gotten seriously hurt or, or died because yeah. um, social, media's, social media sites, they love the engagement, right? And they, so love, they, the viral, they, love, they love viral videos. So, for them to, for the TikTok to pull it, um, I think something serious probably did happen. And probably to a kid, too. If it happens to a young person. Well, it, it was reaching... you. You kind of saw the progression, right? Like it was, it was all fun and, and silliness. But then, as more people started to do it, you started to see stupid stuff, like people kicking crates from underneath people intentionally. Yeah, because that's what makes the video go viral. Uh, yeah, and and that's dimension. you know, and that, and that takes it out of good, good, honest, and genuine fun, or it's just recklessness and, and being seriously dangerous. Yeah. Because um, you know, <clears throat> we don't advocate you doing the the challenge. No, and but if, if you, you do, do it, please do it somewhere soft. Like, but if you do grass. it. And you record it and you and you do it successfully. Like I want to see it because I feel like I can do it. I have great feet. I have great balance. Um, so I, I think I could be successful, even in grass. People doing on concrete. I understand why you would want to do it on con- concrete because it's 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 a flat surface level, and you feel like you don't have to worry. You don't have to worry about lumps or whatever. Um, but concrete's not that smooth. That's a risk. That's a risk, especially if you fall. Um, What else you got in your little I have uh, I don't have any, any any other stupid stuff. I got a stupid thing. But I had a funny thing. Uh, you mentioned um, I don't know if it was last episode or the episode before last that you wanted to talk about OnlyFans. I did. So OnlyFans is a uh, subscription based website where mm-hmm. people, uh, influencers, celebrities, whoever, uh, if they if they have a following or they want to build a following, can um, can you know create a profile and people basically have to subscribe mm-hmm. to view the content and um so where whereas it's it's most known for porn sex work sex work excuse me um there Some are respect. there are there are uh, uh other uh, industries uh influencers of, of other industries um who who have only fans accounts it's not just adult Sex, sex work. Workers. It's not just sex workers. It's, or it's sex fluencers. Sex fluencers. It's, it's, it's other things as well. Um, but yeah, OnlyFans relatively new, right? Uh, born, uh, created in 2016. Mm-hmm. It's London based. Um, so it's to, OnlyFans. To date, they have paid out $3.2 billion mm-hmm. to, uh, to influencers. Um, over 300 influencers or creators, whatever you want to call them, uh, pull about a million dollars a year. Over sixteen thousand, uh, pull I think about fifty thousand a year. So you're talking about something that can actually like be a full time job. Not can be is like yeah, like is a full time job. Like a, if you're pulling fifty k and like you're single and you live in the right place, like you're you're comfortable, 
right? There was so. a mom who her kids actually got kicked out of private school because she had an OnlyFans where she was like cooking and baking in her lingerie, and they were like, "Oh, this." And I'm not doing that. No, I'm just saying that's interesting. Yeah, but people. One, it was like, how do y'all know she's on OnlyFans? Because it is like if you don't have if you're not subscribed, then you can't see the content. So it means somebody's dad was watching her, and or, somebody's and, and, or dad's screenshot wife and caught it, screenshot it, and, and spread the it. word. Yeah, that's um, probably what happened. Somebody's dad got caught. So, kid ended up getting kicked out of private school. And it's just like, I'm not even doing pornography. I'm literally just baking in lingerie. And that was another thing that, that came out. Because, like, during the pandemic, um, first responders, uh, essential workers, uh, they weren't being paid. But they were being, you know, worked, like, crazy hours. Um, and a lot of them had to take, like, like find ways to make supplemental income. Especially, like, in New York, San Francisco, Chicago, all these cities. Um, so, I remember reading an article about, I think it was EMT. Who started yes. doing OnlyFans? Um, started created OnlyFans page. I don't know what she was doing. I, I have an idea, but um, I think she actually ended up being let go, mm-hmm. which uh, is probably be- fine for her because she was probably making more on OnlyFans anyway. I have a friend from high school who's on OnlyFans, um, and I feel like everybody probably has that one a friend from high school who's somewhere. So the reason why it's and I'm gonna let you, I'm gonna let you wrap in a minute by seven table. So the reason why we're talking about OnlyFans I is. Huh? No. But I started it. So and it's in my notes. But I brought it up. In last my notes. Week. It's in my notes. <sighs> uh the reason why OnlyFans was in the news is because they came out a few weeks ago and they had announced that uh they were going to cease adult entertain adult content um from their oh. from their platform. It had until like October or something, right? And basically they came out and said because they were getting pressure from banks and payment processors that they would stop supporting OnlyFans if, uh, because they had serious concerns about the adult content on their site. Now, if you are if you follow the news, you would have heard, I think it was last year, like PayPal and MasterCard, I think, um, pulled uh, their services from, I think, uh, Pornhub. Hub. Pornhub, because there, was, uh, there were instances of, of child pornography on there. Um, Allegedly. Alleged child pornography, excuse me. Um, so they... they uh, Basically said, you know, we can't use our services until you clean this mess up. So I, don't I think know how you clean up Pornhub. But. <laughs> so they said, um, you know, uh, they they were putting that same kind of pressure on OnlyFans. Of course, OnlyFans now is is of a certain significant status, so they can afford to uh, rid themselves of the type of content that got them to where they are. Um, so they said that they were going to do away with it, but then a couple of weeks later, uh, did a did a one eighty. And said that they were actually, they'd received significant, their certain guarantees or whatever, and that they were going to actually continue to allow uh, or suspend their policy change. They didn't say, uh, you know, for, they didn't say they're going to tear it up and throw it away. They said they're going to suspend their new policy and um, adult content would be allowed to continue indefinitely. Mm-hmm. But it, kind of, it still kind of feels like there's some looming uh, ban of. Without content, so you have thoughts. So I would, I, I would love to hear them. Yeah, this is quite the table you set. So is it a banquet hall? Um, yeah, I have thoughts. So, so disrespectful. You know, OnlyFans really peaked during the pandemic, as David mentioned. People were at home; they were able to pivot their public sexual work into a private system. Celebrities are on OnlyFans. I believe Cardi's on OnlyFans. Trey Songz is on OnlyFans. Um, people were disappointed with his work on OnlyFans. Uh, Chris Brown. What people? People. People his like fans. who? His fans. Are you a fan? No. Good. <clears throat> You're the one talking about other people's chaps. You brought up the chaps. I and just you agree- grinned. I, I co-signed. You grinned. She got nice, she got nice chaps. Anyway. I know that would have been a perfect segue to the OnlyFans. I missed it, but we're here now, so go ahead. Anyway. Uh, so, you know, sex workers essentially revolted because at the end of the day, sex workers are always going to be attacked. But, you know, a lot of people survived off of OnlyFans during the pandemic. Uh, I know. I <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. It, it, it was a... I'm sorry. It was, it was, it was an opportunity. Just to make a joke, I'm sorry. 
So. But you're right. A lot of people survive, both the workers and the consumers. <laughs> of it. Go check his viewing. <laughs> a lot of people. A lot of people survived off OnlyFans um, during the pandemic. And I think, like, the laid most, off, waiting on them, waiting on them stimmies. Like most websites, um, I think they wanted to be respected. Um, there's a, a fellow competitor, Patreon. They, when I think of them, I think of just more sophisticated um, content that's being put out. But it turns out they had like a history where they were, they had sex workers as well and they eventually eliminated Get them. Get the freak out of here. Yeah, so it's almost like these websites are what? utilizing sex workers to build. Well, you know that's what happened to Tumblr. That's why I got shut down. What, they shifted? Yeah, they, they will, they, they became known for adult content and then. Oh. Yeah. I thought that was, uh, what's, there was another Craigslist type, type website that used to, oh, it's not going to come to me now. I, 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 I you, yeah, you I know what I'm talking about. I kind of know what you're talking about. Yeah. I can't pull up. So, you know, but. they were, they were essentially getting upset because like you used us, um, gave us this platform and now that you are in a position to gain more, you're like, Hey, go away, find a new platform. So. I mean that is as a business that is their right. It is. It's grimy. It's, it's not. It's, it's 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 not um, ideal, but you know, as a as a business, you have the right to pivot your your brand strategy at at any any time you feel you feel necessary. You do. So, uh, and I don't know the details in terms of their their pivot in ter- in saying that okay, we're gonna allow sex workers to continue to work sexually on site but it just it's it's interesting so i mean i guess maybe rushvibes.com should should create a portion where you know sex workers can grow and we can you know hey if mastercard doesn't want to jump on that's fine there's visa there's bitcoin jump on (laughs) um Mm, so this could be somebody's opportunity to be you know the next only fans uh but yeah, I just found that interesting, and the story the story stuck to me. And then you know, thinking of all the people who have grown, I've never been on the website, so I don't know what content they have that's not you know sexually based. Uh, anytime I hear reference to it, it's it alludes to sex in, in some capacity. Uh, so, at the end of the day, whatever people are doing on OnlyFans, someone's always gonna get access to it. Um, it's unfortunate. Is it unfortunate? I don't know. Like, get your rocks off however you do it. Uh, I've heard some yeah, interesting so things. I, I think uh, I have a couple. Were you done? I'm sorry. I, I was not. Go, but go ahead. I'm sorry. It's okay. The thought's gone because you interrupted. A um, couple thoughts since I, I still have mine. Uh, number one, it's interesting. If you, if you look at a lot of uh, people on Twitter, uh, people who are, are part of, like, new media or, you know, influencers uh, allegedly companies are starting and brands are starting to pivot more toward a uh, influencer based strategy in terms of their their marketing and, and partnerships uh, and the influencer or creator economy is expected to like become really really significant I think in the next you know three to ten years so I think assuming on that's true and only fans has access to that data via you know market research or whatever uh, that may be why they felt they could make this change now and still be six, you know, still be successful. If not, you know, maybe not in the short term, but you know, definitely in the long term. because if people are going to follow uh, influencers more so than they follow uh, the New York times or any other magazines or brands themselves, um, you know, you'll, you'll still be able to get that 20% revenue that they collect from, from people, you know, from, from creators on their site. Uh, as it pertains to sex work, you know, this is something I never realized I had uh, absolutely no opinion on. And I guess that's just the the uh, blessing of uh, not having to do that kind of, not having to be in that line of work or not being interested in it. I just never really thought of it as like just another occupation, right? Like it, it, it's just, I think if you grow up in a certain uh, culture, um, have a certain maybe uh, background, be it, you know, church based uh you just have you kind of inherently look at sex work as negative um and shameful and disrespectful and you know all these other adjectives that you could you could place on it 
But looking at it now, it's people working. <laughs> like it's, it's you, take, you take your, of employment. you take your you take your yeah, you take your precautions, right? You make sure people are have tested negatively, and you <laughs> for certain things, and you yourself test negatively. After that, it's just work, yeah. and every and you're uh you're you, you're a creator, and you you can distribute uh, your product to a consumer for a fee. No and barrier to entry, like <laughs> I mean, that's that's it. It's all here. So uh, I think it's un- unfortunately. Um, uh, sex workers have uh, that that just the name, the occupation, the profession, the title has uh, been given, I think, a negative connotation and, and people look down upon that that industry. But. You know, we've got to work. People, and if, if that's the way in, in this economy, in this, you know, job market, that's still kind of think in, in transition where companies are laying people off and trying to reinvent themselves and downsize and whatever. Um, and some people are saying, hey, I want to take my uh, livelihood more so into my own hands. Uh, and they have these you know, these vehicles to do so. I say, go for it. I know people are going to say, oh, 120 years. If you you got daughters, what if they were? Yeah, then, I, then we'll deal with it in 20 years. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but as of right now, I know if my five-year-old ain't going to be cut talking to me like, hey, daddy, I want to open OnlyFans. <laughs> so I'm not worried about it. So if grown people want to make that decision and for if themselves, she did, it would be the cutest if, OnlyFans. If, if grown people want to, and as it pertains to sex work on OnlyFans, if grown people want to make that decision for themselves, and they are being careful um, and protecting themselves and others, and they're not being taken advantage. Far be of. it for far be it for me to wave my, wag my finger at it because they're out there trying to trying to make it just like I am. And they're just going about it in, in a different means. in a different occupation. They're not a manager. They're creator. <laughs> right, um, you could make the argument that this is way more exciting than, than managing. <laughs> than just managing people, like, like you get to plan your day, you get to pick your your uh, your associate for the day, stop. <laughs> you get to just stop. You're gonna buy outfits and <laughs> just, you get set just, the lighting and stop. like you get to, like just David, way stop. more freedom. David, stop it. You manage. You got to work within the confines of things. Stop it. You just free if you stop you're a it. sex worker. Not free, but you're not, you know. You're, I'm sure. It's so yeah, exhausting. stop hating on stop hating on sex workers. They out here trying to make a living like everybody else. And honestly, I feel like the people who are hating on them are probably subscribers. Um, but you know, in the background, they always have to act like they're holier than thou. But that's another conversation no. for another day. Um, real quick, couple quick hitters. One, uh, there was this. Uh, this just came out today, and I haven't had a chance to really dive into it. Um, but there's a uh, there's like a fake. Uh, high school that was really comprised of like former uh, junior college football players uh, that somehow swindled their way onto like ESPN showcase. And they were playing other <laughs> high school, like legitimate high school uh, 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 teams and they were getting waxed by high schoolers. And here's the thing, the coach <laughs> he had like an outstanding warrant for his arrest. The dude was on ESPN with this fake school. <laughs> And this all just came out today on Twitter. And uh, my little brother, Alan, told me we got to talk about it on the pod. I haven't had a chance to dig into it enough. We're going to follow So maybe up. we'll tweet about it. We'll follow up about it next week. But, like, that just is just randomly happening. But ESPN having a really bad, really bad summer. I know. Um, and also, your girl, I, I, I need to re- retract my support for Sha'Carri Richardson. Like, I'm she's out. Doing the most. I'm out. See? <laughs> like, no, wait, wait. She's, no, she's American. We will support her when she runs. Um, but all this other stuff, like I'm, I'm out. Like I, I love that she is who she is. I love, I love the fact that she's uh, not afraid to express herself in the way that she feels fit or sees fit. Um, but she needs, she needs some people around her, she and um, team. I'm, I'm just out. Like I, I'm, I'm not, I'm not against her. I'm just out. <laughs> like I, I, I take no. I'm Switzerland right now. I, I have we no position. Best for her. I have no position. But she's a, dick. Um, she's a hazard. But yeah, she. Someone needs to change her passwords and, and, and take the phone. From take her, her off Twitter because she's liking comment, like liking tweets. Stop coming for about, the Jamaicans, like. Like, did y'all seen Power? Right, y- y'all know what the Jamaicans do. So, I'm just saying. Leave, um, leave, leave them alone. So real quick, I we got to wrap up. Uh, we're, we're up against the clock, so uh, that's this episode of Rush Vibes. Wait, I, th- I got something. We're we don't have time. We do. I'm gonna make it quick. Wrap no. Up. 
We don't have time. If you if you don't if you haven't already taken the time, if you need the humor, go find the thread regarding Dell and Sonia Curry's divorce and the wise words that the gentleman tweeted to Mr. Dell Curry. It's hilarious. It will give you a whole new perspective. And if you are contemplating separation we'll, or divorce, it would probably give you just a we'll, moment to rethink. And we'll link it. It's oh, hilarious. Probably. Crab legs. So, uh, <laughs> so uh, that's it. Uh, next week, I think we'll uh, have a guest. So uh, be sure to keep up with us on social media. We'll probably announce it before we actually run the episode. Um, hopefully you enjoyed this one. Like I said, we're winding down season one. Uh, we've got probably five more, five, seven more episodes in this. Uh, it's been a blast. Uh, we appreciate you guys rocking with us. So follow us on social media. Subscribe here on YouTube. Episodes every Wednesday. We out. We love you guys. Peace. Let me down